with supporters and opponents of health care reform swarming Capitol Hill, Democratic leaders insisted victory was close at hand. We're going to have 216. We've got the votes. I think we will have the 216 votes. But just hours before the vote, they were still wrangling with party holdouts, clinching critical yes votes from half a dozen anti-abortion rights Democrats with this presidential executive order reiterating a ban on the use of federal funds to pay for abortion services. So with the help of the president, the speaker, we were able to come with an agreement to protect the sanctity of life and the health care reform. The agreement capped a weekend of wheeling and dealing, which included a personal plea to Democrats from the President of the United States. Don't do it for me. Don't do it for the Democratic Party. Do it for the American people. Republicans in lockstep against the bill were using one word to describe it. Dangerous. 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 And argued they were the ones looking out for the public good. This legislation is dishonest. It is irresponsible. It should be defeated. The rising tension on Capitol Hill brought out the worst in some protesters who shouted homophobic slurs at an openly gay Democratic congressman Saturday and racist epithets at a cadre of African-American congressmen, even spitting on one of them. Last time I saw anything like that was back in 1960. In the face of withering criticism from opponents, House Democrats have dropped a plan to use a parliamentary shortcut to pass a set of fixes to the Senate bill without voting on the controversial bill itself. Instead, they're taking two votes, first on the bill, then on the fixes to it. If they succeed, analysts predict Nancy Pelosi will go down as one of the most powerful House speakers of all time. Today, she was toting a rather large good luck charm, the gavel that was used in the enactment of Medicare in 1966. Uh, I will use it this evening when we cast, cast a very successful vote for this important legislation. House Democrats are taking a leap of faith that if they pass their set of fixes to the Senate bill, that Senate Democrats will do the same next week. They badly want these fixes to the bill because they change certain taxes that were in the original bill and they expand Medicaid coverage. But Senate Republicans argue that just makes the package more expensive and they are vowing to put up as many roadblocks as they can. Russ? Congressional correspondent Nancy Cordes on Capitol Hill. Thank you. After the vote, the president plans to make a statement from the White House. But what does the final bill look like and what's in it? Here's what you need to know. Four years from now, an estimated 95 percent of Americans would have health insurance coverage, up from 85 percent today. By 2014, if you're not covered, you'll be fined $695 a year. The plan provides subsidies to buy insurance through tax credits available to a family of four earning up to $88,000 a year. Employers are not required to offer coverage, but the government would charge mid to large businesses a $2,000 per worker fee if any worker needed government subsidies to buy insurance. Businesses with fewer than 50 employees, the self-employed and the uninsured could shop for coverage through new purchasing pools called exchanges. Insurance companies would pay more taxes and be banned from denying coverage due to pre-existing conditions or setting dollar limits on benefits paid. They would be required to allow children to stay on their parents' plans until the age of 26. Medicaid for low-income people would be expanded, allowing a family of four earning up to $29,000 a year to enroll. And Medicare for those over the age of 65 would receive more money from a 1% Medicare tax increase on individuals earning more than $200,000 a year.